Hello and welcome back to my mapping series. So I thought, um, so the thing is this, this area um, around uh, Pschenichina or Pschenichino um, is now relatively finished. Uh, I, oh, wrong area, one sec. Here we go. So I oriented it myself, um, wrong one. Uh, after this Soviet drawing of the rough defenses outline and I think I did a relatively good job at re replicating it should be fun. So there needs to be a second flag here as well. Uh, before I start mapping I thought it would be interesting to look at what actually happened here in real life. Well, first of all Operation Mars uh, started on the 25th of November this was the uh, rough front line here and the Russians managed to break through the lines of the second Luftwaffe field division uh, in this sector and also adjacent sectors so they brought, uh, broke through on a uh, broad front and the main defensive position in this sector was uh, in the second line here at Shenichina. So let's see I have here Translated by Radio Smash. <laughs> Translated by Radio Smash. Um, a report, or actually two reports, I think. So, first of all, uh, the 74th Rifle Regiment, which I think was part of the 6th uh, tank, uh, tank Corps, 6th Rifle Corps, <coughs> uh, at 1900 on the 25th of November. So in the evening of the uh, first day of the offensive, uh, through the staff member of the brigade of Senior Lieutenant. Ruka Vishnikov, the 3rd Independent Battalion received the order of the Brigade Commander Capture Pshenichino. So, at the end of the, um, the first day they had broken through and now the second line was to be attacked. Uh, this is the uh, after action report. Um, so, having reached the initial position for the offensive, 800 meter forest to the west of Pshenichino, the battalion having put up the reverse and received ammunition began to prepare the attack. So I think this is probably this forest here. Uh, remember that uh, the map is scaled down, so in reality this would have been all a lot bigger, but apparently at the end of the first day they had reached the forest here, you know, where our um, where we did the German kind of overrun fallback position here with the field kitchen and blah blah blah. Okay, so that was at the end of the first day. So at 6 a.m. On the 26th of November, after a one-hour artillery preparation, the battalion began its offensive from three directions, north, west and south. So, I'm guessing out of the forest from three directions, maybe infiltrating along this ditch, I could imagine. Um, it's kind of hard to tell how, how uh, like big the frontage would have been here. Um, Supported by 12 MGs and an ATR company, anti-tank rifle company, obviously. And the front rows of the attackers were commanders and political workers who, by their own example, carried the fighters away. That's, I'm guessing, um, what in historical science is called a, um, a topos, so basically something that in this kind of report is expected to be written. Or maybe it's true, uh, it's just that we can't tell at this point. And the en enemy opened with opened a strong mortar MG and automatic fire. There were only some 40 to 50 meters left before the pillbox. So it only talks about one pillbox here, but there were several. Um, we don't have these models yet, but these will hopefully either be replaced or um, with a new static or enhanced with some kind of thing that you can put over it to make a pillbox. I will, once the map is in the beta, I will ask a modeler to look into that. But uh, so that will be later. Just imagine these as pillboxes here. <coughs> but continuous fire did not let us even raise our head. After some quietness of enemy fires, the battalion withdrew to its initial positions. Battalion suffered heavy losses, so obviously this first attack failed due to the um, dug in uh, defenders and so on. All right. And uh, so basically throughout the 26th they tried to attack it several times, each time they had to withdraw uh, and suffered heavy losses. So uh, in, and then it carries on. On the night of the 26th to 27th of November, the reserve of the 4th Independent Rifle Battalion was put into battle. So apparently um, 
the the first battalion that they um, attacked Shenichino with uh, suffered uh, such heavy losses that it had to be rotated out, and they brought up the reserve to deal with this position. Now it is also possible that if the the first battalion uh, that they threw against here had already been involved in the fighting here, it might have already been depleted, which probably also uh, contributed to the failure. One thing that you see in these early Soviet offensives is that they were often characterized by a certain amount of misplanning and pig-headedness that led to these kind of heavy losses where units were bled dry um, or and were given orders even after they had been depleted. So that is what might have happened here as well. Yeah, and the third, yeah, it was the third separate rifle battalion uh, was taken to the reserve because of heavy losses. Yeah, and then the fourth independent rifle battalion who was put into the front uh, got, got the same order. The attempt was unsuccessful. The battalion suffered losses of up to 70 people killed, which for a battalion is very significant actually, and wounded and moved back to its original position. So again, uh, several attacks on this strong point um, on the strong point failed. Okay, so uh, at 16.00, and I think that's still on the 27th, although it's a bit unclear here, but I think it's 27th, so 4 p.m., uh, the battalion for the fifth time went on the offensive, so they tried several times on Pshednichino. Following five tanks, the battalion broke into the village and threw grenades at the pillbox, shooting at point-blank range the Germans running out of the pillbox. Probably happened somewhere here because as we see from the schematic there were several pillboxes actually. So uh, at the end of these reports apparently um, the Russians always um, um, uh, always also mentioned uh, people who had distinguished themselves. So let's do that as well. Especially the Red Army soldier of anti-tank rifle company, company Chernov is his name, distinguished himself. Possessing great physical strength, he shot at enemy pillboxes from his anti-tank rifle with an anti-tank grenade in a sense broke into one of the stubbornly resisting pillboxes, shouting and swearing, threatening to blow up himself with everybody inside it. Then there's the SS, so this was a Luftwaffe Field Division, for some reason they are, um, they are identified as um, SS here. Possibly because they had a slightly different uniform and they hadn't faced, because Luftwaffe Field Divisions were pretty new there, so there uh, might have been an honest mistake here. The SS's raised their hands and then he pushed 17 SS's to the surface where they were shot immediately. During the two hour battle, 17 pillboxes and two bunkers were destroyed. The rest of the garrison in a form of 262 people was shot, 70 people were captured and shot. The ammunition depot was blown up, two tanks and one radio station were destroyed. And then uh, it goes on with some bookkeeping. Following trophies were seized, 200 rifles, 14 MGs, uh, 160 SMGs, blah blah blah. Okay. Um, and then in the end there's another kind of ideological um, uh, flourish at the cost of heavy losses, the fascist freaks paid for the deaths of brave commanders and Red Army soldiers of the Stalinist Brigade of Siberian Volunteers. And the village of Pshednichino fall into, um, fell into Soviet hands. Alright, so there's some interesting stuff mentioned here. There's two tanks that were destroyed. Um, the number of pillboxes is, of course, also interested. interesting. So, 17 pillboxes and two bunkers, which is a lot more than what we see in the uh, in the rough uh, schematic that we base this on. My guess is that many of these houses actually were fortified as well into pillboxes. And in fact, in uh, this report, included uh, this drawing of Pshednichino. As you can see, burning. Houses, some of which may, may have been um, fortified, and here in the front you can see the pillboxes which were dug and camouflaged in the snow, reinforced with locks and probably had MG positions in it. And these were then um, connected by trenches or maybe, maybe even tunnels in some places. Um, so uh, the um, correct count of pillboxes might have actually been uh, somewhat hard to establish. Although if you look here, if you imagine these are pillboxes, we are actually pretty close to that drawing, especially maybe in this area here. 
Uh, note that in my version, of course, the village is not yet destroyed. Um, this, is, this has two reasons. For one thing, obviously this map starts at the first day, and in the first day it probably wasn't all that destroyed. And also, from a gameplay perspective, you want to uh, want the sectors to actually feel um, somewhat uh, unique. So the first one is the one that has the destroyed theme. This has the forest theme, and this has a uh, kind of more intact but fortified village theme. All right, um, so there's also a more detailed description here of the uh, village of Pschernicino. The village of Pschernicino was the center of the enemy's defense. It occupies a very advantageous strategic position surrounded on three sides by valleys that prevail over the surrounding area, which is why the Germans chose the village of Pschernicino Chenichino, sorry, as the center of the pocket of resistance, greatly strengthening it. So you can kind of see this here. There's this valley here, the valley in front of it. And there's another valley here. It's relatively hard to attack. And of course, the heights on all sides, which come into play later. On the slopes near the houses, there were up to 50 pillboxes connected by deep lines of communication. Some pillboxes had underground secret passages with dark outs under the houses, as I assumed. Literally all the houses were turned into the pillboxes connected by lines of communication. Yeah, that's actually what I said. And you can see here on the heights uh, next to the village you have the trenches. So now it gets interesting. Well, more interesting. On the height crest, on the northern outskirts of the village, two tanks were buried as pillboxes. They fired on the neighboring heights. And now, um, and um, all the fire was corrected in cooperation with aviation from the observation point arranged in a tank 200 meters northeast of the village at a completely open height. This tank, skillfully faked as burned, did not attract any attention, but in fact there was an observer in it connected to the pillboxes via telegram. So um, there were two t tanks dug in, I'm guessing here, either here or if they were further away up here, which could also be a decent backstop position, which is why in my original plan I had wanted to make a flag here. But uh, since the village moved over here, it's now too close to the village, and I can't really move it further here because that's where the map ends. On top of that, I mean, this I could deal with. I would just make uh, surrounding terrain, who gives a shit. But um, it's also, in addition to that, not all that interesting, this height here. I'm guessing this is where these tanks were dug in. But compared to the heights in the south here, uh, I think these are actually the more interesting position because they are higher, they also have a commanding position and you have this uh, road, well, this path network here which uh, makes it easier to guide players there. Um, there was also at the time a hamlet, uh, probably I will make this like a burnt hamlet, but the, this is the more interesting position. Because of that, uh, as I said in earlier videos, I have decided to kind of uh, fudge it here a bit and say that the tanks that were dug in up here will, in my version, be dug in on this hill instead. So, because at the end of the day, this is also a nice position. Look at this, what you can see from here. This is where the Russians are coming from. That's a decent position. So, anyway, these two tanks were destroyed. Um, correct. So, um, I think I showed you this picture before. The Russians drew a picture of the tanks that uh, they encountered here, which were apparently Stuks. Um, probably short barreled Stuks in support of 2nd Luftwaffe Field Division. In the Russian after action report, it also uh, mentions that their tank support. This tank support came from, from the 104th Tank Brigade, which at the beginning of the offensive had, um, I think, 13 to 34th, 12th, or something of that descriptions 12 T60s and 3 KV1s and they also supported the uh, attacks on this village. Um, the first attacks of course failed uh, and they blamed this on the infantry and the lack of artillery preparation because you know when something goes wrong there's always finger pointing. Um, so uh, some interesting uh, stuff here because I, I have that after action report as well. In the battle for Pschernicino at the 26th 
of November, the crew of the T-60 company under the command of Junior Lieutenant Filonov from 301st Tank Battalion distinguished themselves, breaking the enemy's defense, destroying with fire and caterpillars up to 20 Hitlerites and 5 machine gun points. Filonov died as hero. Uh, I think this is um, from the failed attack on the 26th, so apparently their tank support there and uh, from uh, how I read this, uh, many tanks were taken out during this attack and uh, this might be, you know, after do doing some damage and this might be kind of a way to um, to uh, save face here. Uh, the commander and mechanic driver of the T-60, or of one of the T-60s, Medvedev and Zinitsyn, who were the first to break into the village, also died bravely. So that's from the attack that completely went wrong. Apparently that T-60 support there. Uh, now, the Russian tank uh, units usually had um, Tanku Devantniki infantry in support. Uh, Submachine gunner Resnikov from motorized MG rifle battalion destroyed more than 15 Hitlerites and captured three. And uh, now it gets interesting. The machine gunner of the motorized MG rifle battalion Naumov killed up to 50 Hitlerites with machine gun fire and captured six. And then there's more. Um, uh, of these kill counts for different crews who um, did a good job and um, correct and here's what is interesting to us uh, irreversible losses 1T60 uh, knocked out and require average repair 2T34 knocked out and require current repair 3T34 1T60 so T60s and T34s attacked with the village on the 26th uh, they suffered uh, six officers, 18 NCOs, and one private killed. Um, so that's for the tanks, obviously. The infantry might have suffered more. So, um, Okay, so now uh, let's look at when the village actually fell. And that's the 27th. At 9 a.m., the tanks entered the village of Pschenichino and shot at the enemy's pillboxes and dugouts. The infantry coming from the opposite side, having met a strong SMG fire, did not move forward. As a result, the attack was unsuccessful. Tanks were brought to the village, village of Bloskaya. So, first, not successful on the 27th. And one second. Performing uh, the assigned task, the brigade commander decided to destroy the pillboxes and dugouts with 104th anti-tank battery. That's I wonder if that's uh, that anti-tank rifle. No, that wouldn't be a battery. That was a battalion, right? And two batteries of the 74th Infantry Brigade. That was the unit that we had the other report from. Then to link the infantry with tanks, attack Pschenichino from the northeast, destroy the defending garrison, uh, 350 people, and gain a foothold in it. At 1700, the tanks and infantry organized into assault groups blocked the pillboxes and by 2015 the garrison of the stronghold was completely destroyed. At the same time, up to 300 Hitlerites were killed, 60 captured, two warehouses with ammunition were blown up. So maybe um, in one of the open houses we can make like a warehouse out of that with um, ammo boxes, note that down. Uh, six AT guns were destroyed. Let's look at that. One. One, two, three, four, five, six. That actually lines up completely um, with the picture here. Uh, two assault guns, two warehouses with food and other weapons were seized. Uh, so the assault guns are mentioned here again. And then in the end, in the battles for Pschenichino, the following individuals distinguished themselves. Deputy Brigade Commander uh, Major Kozemyako, who headed the engagement, uh, the management of tanks and infantry, uh, then the commander of the tank, um, uh, infantry, and so on. And another person is mentioned here again. Remember Naumov, uh, a Red Army submachine gunner of the motorized MG rifle battalion Naumov, broke into a pillbox and killed eight Hitlerites with a Finnish knife. Now that to me is funny and interesting, and I think. When we go to the, the gameplay portion, I will make a, a custom pickup kit called a, like a sold Naumov or something that has a PPSH and like a finish, uh, like a Pugo knife. Because that's a nice detail, why not? You know, I mean, we have like uh, Michael uh, uh, Wittmann's uh, Tiger tank, and why not have this guy as well? Why not? It's kind of funny. 
and during the day of the battle, the brigade suffered losses in material, um, three T-34 knocked out, uh, requiring repair, one T-60 knocked out, uh, no, three T-60s knocked out, sorry. And uh, three officers, four NCOs, seven privates killed. So he said they attacked from the northeast. So what I gather happened is that, um, as I said, the first assaults frontally all failed. And then in the end, uh, they seized other villages here and basically cut this off and then attacked from the back. And this is how they got it in the end. Obviously, that was on the 27th. So we're not going to uh, have this area in play for our map because that's for the first day or the first two days maybe. But um, yeah, that's what happened in real life. So let's actually go back to mapping. Okay, as I said, this hill here um, is where the flag will be, probably at this crossroad or close to it. And so first what I want to do is... Um, Okay, let's talk about this a bit. So I want to have the two uh, tank dig-in points here, and maybe some more trenches and foxholes, but no trench system like this. Maybe some uh, improvised foxholes and trenches around it. But generally speaking, if you look at the plan, this would be a relatively boring part of the map because there's not much here. Of course, there's this village or hamlet. I wouldn't even call that a village by uh, early Russian standards. Um, so uh seems pretty bare. The thing is, if we look at our military map, so zoom in, come on, load that shit. Anyway, here we have Chernichino, and um, come on, here we go, okay. And you can see this is the uh, big forest that we just saw. And what you can see here is there is trees, and I think this stands for like light forest, something that is actually here. So there, it wasn't a completely bare hill, it just wasn't a proper forest like these two. Uh, in addition to that, if you look here at the uh, height map or the uh, height lines, there were these gullies that went up the side of the hill here. Now interestingly, my erosion map did actually mark one of them here. So this is uh, apparently a very natural place for Gully to uh, appear because we also have these streaks going down here. And um, earlier I had already lowered the terrain. What I want to do is create three gullies. This one will probably be out of bounds, but three gullies from this one up here, one here and one here, so that with vegetation, so infantry has a way to uh, sneak up. So uh, that we will do, of course, after the German positions. And then I will kind of, or I want to kind of extend these gullies, but with uh, like smaller and with a bit less vegetation, uh, with more depressions going along the ridge here towards the forest, also filled with some vegetation just to mix it up here a bit. What I'm not yet 100% sure, we will see how this looks, is, oh, and also I want to add vegetation along the, the roads here. This area then is still left as being completely open, but probably I will then also um, kind of mirror these um, erosion gullies up here with roads and just paint them by hand. It's not ideal, but in this uh, situation I think I will do that just so I can get some cool looking vegetation up here. And uh, this area is a bit more interesting. But uh, first of all, of course, the German positions for the Stutz. Um, thing is, I don't think anyone will ever use them, probably, except maybe infantry. But I kind of want them to be available and in decent positions so that maybe somebody will at one point use them. It's more of a, a historical detail at this point. So uh, we have, of course, these tank pits, which we have also used for the basement. Uh, in um, Emilia Novo. So I want one here, and the other one between the two here is kind of the central point. Let's just drag both of them in here. So here we have the tank pit. So the question is, I want to try out, do we have, do Stucks even fit into here, and how, let's see, do we have a Stuck rack? I think we do. I think we have one on, at least on uh, Hürtgen Forest, I want to say, there's Stuck Rex. So let's Stuck 40 Rex, okay. Let's try that shit out. 
Obviously that won't be then the, the Okay, so Stuck does fit in here quite quite perfectly actually there, so that's good. And obviously, okay, the gun on the destroyed one is a bit depressed, but obviously would have to be at least uh, this high in here to be protected by it. He would try forward. Obviously it would be a short barrel Stuck, so maybe like the barrel would stick out here. I mean, this is a Stuck 3, right? Yeah, of course, it's an old one, okay. So um, maybe you could think it a bit more and this would be uh, a good kind of height for it. Let's see. I've never actually done this, so I need to improvise a bit here. So actually you can dig this out pretty deep if you look at this. Obviously I don't know if the suspension would affect itself, but uh, if we count um, at least one, two, three, four, five, six of these logs deep and uh, it would still probably fit quite well. And so yeah, let's get rid of the stock for now. And uh, let's see, let's start with the central one here and then the rest I will speed up. Ah, that's a weird pivot, although I guess it makes sense now that I think about it. Um, of course we will have to, um, we can't just place it like this for one thing it would look shit and we would have to raise the terrain around the, we are, uh, around the thingies, around the uh, trench skirt, so we have to uh, make it conform to the terrain. But that's not a huge problem, that's what these are basically made for. Put it like this, and then like this. Uh, let's see if this works. This is no trick of how you can do that relatively easily. Ah, uh, still a bit forward. Like this, and that should actually be good. and sink it in more again. And here we go, now we can uh, quote unquote excavate it. This is a decent position, right? Maybe a bit more forward. And then we have to... Uh, imagine uh, the gun was at this height. You could easily shoot down, especially with a, a low um, velocity gun like an early Stock. And this is the nice field of fire then. Obviously, you know, at the end of the day, this is wh what I find a bit weird about that report is why did they dig in their Stugs? I can see digging in a tank, you know, with like a turret, but the Stug, you don't want to dig that in, right? Then again, you know, Luftwaffe Field Division, who knows what the fuck they were doing. They were probably disappointed they couldn't fly. All right. All right. So let's uh, speed it up, take this out. So the two uh, tank dig-in points are finished, so if anybody wants to uh, do me a favor, try those out on the first uh, day the map is played. <laughs> yeah, but uh, they should be mildly useful uh, at least. You can shoot into the flag zone from there, so you know, maybe maybe somebody will, will use them at some point. So next up what I will do is um, make these um, ravines that go up here. I decided in the interest of flow one will lead directly to the road here and the other will be here coming up here uh, into the flank of the tank position and that's kind of the idea.
All right, it has cooled off a little bit now that it's later, so I keep working on this. In the meantime, I um, placed a lot of vegetation around here and a few more ditches. So it's a bit more interesting now. In fact, if you oops, see now uh, from the view from down here, it actually looks pretty cool. Mm, like you can look up there and you have this hill and you can actually barely see where the Stucks can be dug in. So that position is actually pretty covered. So um, in order to further flesh this out, I also want to um, place some trenches, but not uh, the elaborate trench systems like here and over there, but just some slit trenches around here just so it looks like the uh, like infantry has uh, dug itself in here maybe to protect the Stucks or to, uh, you know, to so they just hastily fortified that hill. And for that I will speed up once more.
so this is roughly finished. Um, has a few trenches now from where infantry can shoot as well as of course take cover. I um, think these could be quite useful, um, although it's hard to get there uh, once the fighting has started. But yeah, this uh, flag will be the infantry one, this will be more for tanks. And then I also um, made the final kind of on-map hamlet. There's some off-map, like here, where I just placed a bunch of buildings and um, vegetation, just so you have something in the background, but obviously you can't go there. And so I don't waste time on fences and shit. German main base will be here, and that will be the next thing. Uh, what I will do first, though, off-camera is fill this stuff here in with vegetation, add some um, detail to the forest area here, where German infantry spawns will also be. I think this will be out of bounds, so I don't have to add detail there, but I'm um, guessing the Stucks will um, spawn here, so they're behind that crest, and uh, this is where the combat area will start. And yeah, anyway, hope you enjoyed it. As always, uh, thanks for watching, and have a nice day.